Good day, hi, and welcome. All right, here it is. The Jackson RRT5. Randy Rhodes Pro Model Flying V. Uh, one year and a bit, a little more than a year, a year, 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 a little more than a year that I've owned this awesome axe. And uh, I thought I'd do a, a review of things I like about it, things I don't. Uh, not too much. <laughs> not too much. Uh, I got negative to say about this guitar. Is it my best guitar I've ever owned? Maybe not. But is it the best sounding guitar I've ever owned? Possibly. Uh, haven't played with it live yet. Uh, but hopefully this year coming, I will get a chance to get this thing on stage. I think people will be pretty impressed by it because it is a pretty crazy guitar to begin with. Uh, very very. It is a bit of a one trick pony. Um, if you're one of those guys that do rock and blues and jazz and metal and, uh, you know, uh, everything else under the sun, uh, this guitar is really meant for the metal head. Hard rocker metal head. Uh, definitely the ultimate thrash metal sounding guitar, if you ask me. It just, it, it just really does that thing. Um, playability, pretty darn good. Perfect? No, but pretty darn good. So I guess I'll just start with the specs. So I got an, now some of these will have alder bodies. Some of these will have mahogany bodies. So if you have an RR3, for example, it'll probably have the uh, mahogany body. If you have the made in Japan version of this, this is the Indonesian guitar. But if you have the made in Japan, made, made in Japan, made in Japan version, you might have a mahogany or an alder body. Uh, this one has an alder body. You can tell as soon as you pick it up, things like super, super light. Uh, you know, for such a, you know, these are large guitars when they're long, they're really long. Uh, you know, pointing guitars are really long. So the thing about this guitar is it's 22 frets. You got an ebony fingerboard. Uh, it's a, uh, 12 to 16 compound radius. Um, two Duncan, uh, SH6 distortion pickups. Really crazy. A two pneumatic bridge. That's what the T is for. There's two versions of this guitar. One has a Floyd Rose, one has uh, the two pneumatic bridge. So you take the T model would be the the tre for tremolo, but it's not. It's for the two pneumatic bridge. Uh, this one has the gold hardware. The other one has basically the uh, chrome hardware. Uh, regular Jackson tuners. Uh, for this price range, I wish they would kind of up that a bit. They're not bad tuners, but they're not great. You know what I mean? Uh, one of the few things that I'll gripe about, it is a string through body construction. Very nice, generous uh, jumbo strap mounts on there. They're not locking uh, mounts, or what you call it, uh, clip locks, but they're they're pretty good. Uh, volume, a tune, three-way toggle. Output jack is somewhere down in there. And a whole lot of uh, hooliganing sounds that you can get out of this thing. Uh, it has a satin finish neck or uh, base or sorry not satin finished uh, it's it's just a uh, light finished uh maple neck heel joint here's the string through body and uh there's the back of the tuners this guitar i bought it, it is a, a 20 circa 2021 there we go we're now in 2023 but, uh, or sorry, 2022 is when I bought it. So I, I don't know by the serial number. I haven't really looked at the serial number uh, enough to tell you when it was actually made. But that's, I bought it in 2022. I think in August of 2022 or something like that. So we're a little over a year with it. And you have a, obviously a truss rod and a double graphite rod in the Pro Models. Just so you know, it's C-shaped neck. Uh, the nut looks like it's plastic. You know, again, Jackson does funny things. They'll give you a really awesome guitar and everything will be awesome on it, but they'll put a couple of cheap things on it. And it's just, why do they do that? Obviously, it's a bound neck. Uh, okay, so I'll start with the bad stuff. I got maybe two sort of complaints about this guitar. Uh, not deal breakers, but, it would, you know, step up the game a bit. When you go from the, well, we'll start with the tuners. These are like Jackson base model tuners. Uh, these are the cheapest ones. 
uh, that they got. So they work, but they're not that smooth. Uh, I mean, again, you'll get get in, in and out of tune. Uh, no problem with them. Uh, you know, no problem that way. But they could be a lot more refined for the money. Now, this was a, in Canadian dollars. It was $1,279.99. So we'll say $1,280. Uh, for the price, this is a really good professional guitar for the money you know with tax and all it was still under fifteen hundred dollars so um i bought it from the art store arts music store uh in markham ontario i believe and if uh you're gonna call them up uh, and you deal with a guy named ryan he's i never met the guy but he does fantastic work for you he goes to bat for you and he's done it for several guitars now for me uh so you know just like to give them a shout out uh, that said, okay, so the first thing is the tuners. Not a deal breaker, but at this price range, you would expect a little bit nicer. The second one is a little different. It has to do with the E string. This guitar plays very well, but right away when I bought it, I did notice that uh, the spacing between the ABR1 bridge and the uh, Floyd Rose is slightly different. So what happens is your E string seems to sit a little bit too far or too close to the edge of the fingerboard and it, it, it not a deal breaker but it does sometimes feel like you're going to pull the e string off the edge of the fret and i've noticed it's not just one jackson that this happens on uh, it seems like a you know they, they could just maybe make the uh fingerboard just maybe about a millimeter wider and that'd take up any sort of problem like whatsoever that that's about the only real gripe i have the other thing is, is, and again, I don't know what Jackson could do about this, and I'm sure Jackson is not the only one that has this problem, Is, but you're going to see, like, the tape line. Again, at this price range, you really don't want to be seeing tape lines. I don't know how you deal with that. Like, the line is perfect, but it's like you could just see the tape line there. So, again definitely not a deal breaker if that that's all it takes you to not want to buy this guitar you're, you're really missing out uh because this guitar has lots of craziness and mentalness to to offer uh you know so that's the bad thing the other thing in uh some guitars are like this some guitars are not uh my other jackson didn't do it uh, the js32 didn't do it but this one for whatever reason i cannot keep that 12 millimeter um uh uh, uh not tight <laughs> it, it just this is one of those guitars i had one gibson that was like that i had an ibanez that was like that the the the, the jack goes loose all the time <sighs> i don't know why that happens so if that's a gripe i i again would you not buy a guitar because of that <laughs> i mean you know like at some point you know okay yes have standards but at some point you're just too damn picky so that's the bad now let's talk about Who's a good? So the good is the good is the sound. Uh, I'm I'm a fan of uh, Spectre Studios. Uh, that Glenn, I don't know what his last name is there, but you know, any his thing on tone woods. There's things I agree with him with, and things I don't agree with him with. Uh, but in the room, the Alder body really gives you especially through this big beast of a of a cabinet uh there's four 90 watt celestian black shadows in there uh th that cabinet i've had it since 1991 why because i cannot seem to find another cabinet on the market that sounds better than it i'm not saying it's the best sounding cab in the world but man it is pretty damn good and every time i play this thing it hasn't been on stage in years but every time i did it was just people like that cab man is crazy it sounds so cool what a killer tone and again, I only got like a 15 watt crate amp running into my zoom pedal. I can't really see my zoom pedal, but it's uh, hopefully you were looking at my zoom pedal and not my butt. But anyway, <laughs> uh, but it produces a killer sound. And one thing about these speakers is uh, where I agree with Glenn is, you know, like, you know, if you really want to change your tone, change your speakers. I'm 100% on board with that. And that's how I discovered, like, when I, this between a Marshall stack was just an A-B test. And I was sold on this thing ever, ever since, since 1991. Uh, with the higher wattage speakers, okay, you get 
uh, a lot more headroom. So you might not, don't worry about gain. Yes, the smaller speakers, you can overdrive them a lot easier. But when you get these bigger speakers, you get a lot more clarity. And when you get a lot of clarity, you hear more faults and vines and vices of a guitar. And this guitar has the thrash metal sound. It, it, it's just, if you want to be Dave Mustaine from 1991, you can. If you want to be Metallica in 1985, you can. You want to be, uh, you know, Anthrax in 1990, 1989, you can. Uh, you want to, uh, you know, punch people in the face with your power cords, you can. <laughs> uh, these pickups are just absolutely really geared towards the mid-range, uh, but with a lot, a lot of punch. Uh, very lively guitar. It has an, a very bright sound to it, uh, which, again, gives you a really thrash metal sound, and it does it so good. The cleans are really good, but the problem is, is these pickups are so high output, that you have to play very lightly or you're just going to have like so many overtones, uh, you know, like you're not going to have a clean channel when you play this guitar three, you're going to have a crunch channel, more crunch than thrash metal, <laughs> you know, if you have a booster or whatever. So there's that. So if you want to play a lot of cleans, you might have to play a bit compressed just to kind of tame the pickups. Now you could lower the pickups, but only a monster would do that. <sighs> Uh, any, anyway, yeah, you could lower the pickups because you can see how high they set that, that pickup. It's pretty darn close, but there is a quite a bit of a gap there. You know, again, that's just, it's just, you see the, the neck pickup is almost all the way down. Now, this being a neck through body guitar, you also get more volume and sustain and everything.